Okay, traders, today is Friday. It is April 26, 2013. It is uh, just past midday, and we are about to begin a live class that should tell us what the markets are trying to do or should do from Friday, this day, moving forward, especially into the first week in May. First week in May should be interesting. Traders, as you know, futures trading can be extremely risky and cause substantial financial loss. Futures trading is not suitable for all trading accounts. And if you do not use stops, you are a very reckless futures trader. Always place stops and place them first. Okay, what are we looking at? For trading, April 26th, Friday, and going forward, I'm looking at a daily chart of the E-mini S&P. And what we need to remember is this, traders do not get lulled to sleep. The April death knell still looms overhead for the month's end. Now, the month is ending the first two days next week, Monday, Tuesday. April comes to an end. We go into the beginning of May. If you recall that story, if you recall that story I was showing you on the charts, and to me, that's exactly what it was like. It was like reading a story. If you recall the story, it showed us that April, or the end of April and leading into May, can very quickly become a death knell to the markets. So I did an entire video about that, and I want, you to I want to remind you about it because it's quite important. It's something that we need to remember. We will look at a few charts now for the short term, but for the next few days, week ahead, let's call it for the next five days, Maybe the next 10 days, this is something I want you to remember. The April death knell still looms overhead. Nothing has been proven to us that it's not going to clobber us. And let's go look now at the charts and see what's going on. You are looking at the E-mini S&P. It's a daily bar chart. This is what I like to call a head and shoulders pattern. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. As you come out of the right shoulder here, you move higher and... You could construe this very easily as an F flag. We'll move those extensions there. This could be your F flag. This could be your flag, Paul. And very easily, you can call that an F flag. And I'd like to say that that's exactly what it is. Then you look at the shoulder, head, shoulder, and say, well, Oscar, you believe in, and you're always preaching about these head tests. Maybe this is a head test. And yes, that's exactly what I think it is. And if we fail up here... If we fail to get above the head from the center to the middle, from the center to the top, if we do not get above that, it's a failure and the market breaks down. So tricky chart to look at because right now when you're looking at this chart, you know, it looks like a very bullish chart. Just remove this. And you look at that and go, well, hey, what's wrong with that chart, Oscar? That looks pretty strong. Well, I'm not going to argue the point that the chart itself looks pretty strong. I think overall it does. But I will say we're breaking some key support lines now and getting back above them. And it's getting a little interesting what's going on here. We also have another few charts to look at before we say whether we're bullish or bearish. So we need to look at this chart and other charts in another way. First of all, let's step this out to a weekly. When you step this out to a weekly, traders, here's the E-mini S&P on a weekly bar. Here's the crash lows of 2009. Nice, big, red parallel channel that we're in. No question about this one, and it's holding well. So really long term, bull market, no doubt. And then in the short term, this looks pretty good too, right? Nice, strong move up here. But then let's look for short very short term trading like today tomorrow tuesday wednesday let's look at resistance levels when you extend this parallel channel that has been working quite well we're running into trouble there so you go all right you know maybe maybe there's something to watch out for so case number one is we do have a head and shoulders in the daily we looked at the head and shoulders we know it exists and we're trying to prove, by the way, whether or not we have an April death knell looming overhead. So we know we have a head and shoulders, and we know we're having a head test on the daily. And then back to the weekly. On the weekly, we see that we're running into some resistance on our parallel channel. So, you know, case number one says, all right, no big 
real worry to run for the exits when you look at those charts. Maybe a little caution here, and we don't really know if the head and shoulders fails until we see it fail. So not a real case here in the S&P. So we move on to another chart. When we look at the Russell 2000, which has been a, a real leader of the last few months of this move, when you look at the Russell 2000 on the daily bar, it's not as pretty because we have a high here, and that high comes across right here where this yellow line is. The next high that gets set, believe it or not, is a little bit lower. It's hard to see that, but it is a little bit lower. It's right here. So we have a high and then another high. So we have a high set and it comes down. Rallies back up, but that high is not as high as this one. So we have what you can call literally a lower high. So we made a high and we put in another high, but it was lower. Well, then we came off and put in a lower low. All right, from high to low, back to high, but we didn't quite get there, to a lower low. Then we rallied up and we put a high in here, but we stopped cold and here is where we are today, this day. But now we look at the parallel channel that we've been following and tracking and staying inside of, and we've broken under it after putting in the third lower high. So a high gets set, a lower high gets put in, another lower high gets put in. In the interim, after that high gets set, of course, a low comes in, so high to low. After that low, it rallies to this high, comes back in and puts in a lower low, rallies up, puts in a lower high. Is this telling us that the April death knell is looming? I think we need to worry about that. Let's look at the weekly. When you look at the weekly on the Russell, you can clearly see that, boom, we hit that resistance mark. And I've just said Russell's been a leader of this club here lately, right, of the indices club. Well, Russell hit that mark and started to come off already. And the followers are just hitting it now, as we showed you with the S&P on the weekly. So I find that interesting. I'm not calling for a big down move by any means. If it were not this April death knell we need to worry about, I wouldn't even be considering this video with you right now. But I have to consider it because of what we know. April seemed to be something that pulls down the markets. The end of April, beginning of May. So that's the weekly and the, and the daily on the Russell. Let's look at another chart. Here's where it's going to start to get tricky, traders. This is the NASDAQ daily bar. You know, we have a lot of bears out there. We have a lot of pundits out there that love to call the top every time the market wiggles. We have a lot of Elliott Wave technicians out there that think that the top is in every time you see another high in any market anywhere. So they're going to come out of the woodwork and consider this a double top right here if we do not move any further. Take away today's trading... And here's what it looked like yesterday. That's basically uh, what you can call a double top if it doesn't continue going any further. Add today in. And, you know, if it doesn't make it above that high, they're going to come out and consider this a double top and start selling it. And where are we? The end of April, beginning of May. That's when you'd expect some kind of a crazy top to come in. So more evidence that we need to be careful of whether or not we have some sort of a April phenomenon, end of April, beginning of May phenomenon taking place in our indices. Let's move forward. Traders, you may remember this chart. We actually drew this chart up together. I put this shoulder in when it didn't exist, and I said maybe this will fill in now. I'm sure many of you in the chat room will remember this. So we had left shoulder, head, we were building a right shoulder, but it didn't really have any bars in it at this point in time. It was about 10 days ago. We have dropped into the right shoulder and starting to fill in, but if you remove it, once again, you're looking at a, a chart or a market that is starting to put on a series of lower highs and lower lows. So we have to be careful what's going on here because you obviously started putting in some lower highs up here. Look at the trend line. Then if you remove that, you go, well, what else is it? This could very well be the bear flag that's going to form right before the end of April, beginning of May, and the death knell is served. There may be your bear flag. Let's write it in. So while the market has been bullish, and of course, 
we'll find out in a day or two if it turns. You just move this a little higher, and that will be the flag. We will find out shortly. What I'm trying to do is stay focused on the evidence that we found in that last class that we did in that last series of videos about the April death knell, end of April, beginning of May. So I'm trying to stay focused on that because barring that, it's been a pretty bullish week. And there's no reason to not think bullish. But yes, there is. We know there's a bigger picture here. Two, really two bigger pictures. The extra large picture is, of course, the weekly charts and the monthly charts and the bull trend that we are in when you look at the chart like this and say, well, it starts down here and goes all the way up there. That's a bull market. Absolutely. But when you're trading the wiggles inside of the bull market, you have to be careful of seasonalities. You've got to be careful of flags, you know, things that are working out. So we do know this. We have this April, May death knell looming over, and this could very well be a bear flag to complement the other bearishness that we're seeing now. Let's look at the industrial average. When we look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, if you remember, I did the very same thing. I drew in a fictitious right shoulder and wondered if it would fill in. So far, we haven't really jumped far out of it, although the shoulder is meaningless. The shoulder is just there to represent some bars, but it's there. But when you take this away, and whether or not that's a head and shoulders, we'll find out. If you take this stuff away and you look at your trend line here, you have to recognize that you broke a major trend line. You've gotten under it. You've gotten to it. Was rejected for a day. Got back to it was rejected again, and now you're here. Is that a, a little bull flag? Well, it certainly could be, but it's something building below what was support and decent support held here, held here, held here, and then finally gave way. Becomes resistance when you go back up. Boom, 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 resistance, resistance. So it's showing to be a valid line. Just something for us to watch out for. Here we are in the end of April, beginning of May, and we find ourselves below a major support line. Just want to keep us in focus, traders. That's all I'm doing here. Let's move forward. We look at the DAX. Shoulder, head, shoulder. We know that's a head and shoulders. A little baby shoulder, head, shoulder inside the right shoulder. Then we come down. Boom. boom. It stops down here, starts to rally back up, and looks like a decent rally. But is it simply just a head test of the head and shoulders? Is that what's happening here? Really hard to say at this moment in time. We're going to be cautious. I, I like bull markets, right? We've been in a bull market. I'm not going to say anything. But isn't it interesting that right about now, at the end of April, we're about to hit that resistance line I just drew in? goes from the highest high to the next one and extends out. And we're going to kind of run into it now sort of throws it into that same scenario that we have brewing. Is the end of April, beginning of May going to show us something ugly? So that was my case I wanted to present to you as far as the indices, what's going to happen over the next few days. We all know I'm a bull at heart. We also know that I can look at a chart and read it for what it is. If it's bearish, I'm calling it bearish. If it's bullish, well, then that's great. It goes with my heart. But luckily, I know how to separate the two. You need to do the same as bullish as it has been and as it seems, you know, we got to think about this April, May death knell. And so let's put that off to the side. Let's go look at another market that I have found quite interesting. Here's the gold traders. This is a daily bar chart of the gold with the 200 bar moving average going across this blue teal moving average. For any of the Omniacs who have been with me for quite some time, you know two things about me. One, I grew up in the gold and silver pits on the exchange, in the pits as a broker, trader. And two, I haven't really done a lot of gold trading since gold exploded five years ago. I've just backed away from the market. So lately, you've seen Omni belt out all kinds of gold trades. Just lately, gold trades coming out of the woodwork. And for anyone that knows me, you know that that's not, you know, it's not quite familiar. It's not our ordinary. But Omni had noticed something about gold several months ago, and we did some videos and, and did classes about it, forewarned the Omniacs who are gold bugs, and here it was. Back here around October of last year, Omni started to warn us, right around the price of gold, 1780, that something just doesn't seem right any longer. And the gold came off a little bit. 
started to build a series of head and shoulders patterns and it would break this parallel channel after it built the shoulder and a head, it would break a parallel channel, build the next shoulder, and then you'd come off. And then it would build a shoulder and a head and break a parallel channel and build another shoulder and then come off. And of course, patterns love to repeat. Shoulder, head, shoulder, it breaks this parallel channel, creates another shoulder, then goes into a bare flag, then goes into a tailspin. Omni calls 1780 something to watch out for. At 1680, Omni calls an official top in gold, does a few videos about it, and starts to trade the gold more often. Here we are, just from mid Feb or first week in Feb when Omni called top, we're only in the end of April and gold has plummeted from these levels in the form of the head and shoulders and the bear flags. Now, right here, we have another bear flag. And as you traders know, I've just been waiting for, you know, probably gold to get tired up here somewhere where I think we need to sell it again. And it happens to be inside of this interesting possible bear flag. You hit that today and really came off pretty hard. So we need to keep our eyes on the gold chart because the gold may very well be in a spot that we can then start selling it again. I'm not sure it's there yet. The logical spot would be this. You connect your long-term trend line and expect it to come back up there because it's a parallel channel. But, so you'd expect it to come up here, right? And hit the top of this trend line. How many of you in the chat room would expect to hit the top of this trend line right here before it's over? Right here, this one. I'll remove the rectangle. Xanax, you think so? How many others in the, in the chat room would think so? I would think that looking at a chart like this, you would think that this continues up until it hits this trend line and then comes back off. But watch this. Then you go, wait a minute, let's make sure that we have this thing sitting correctly. It's on the lows there. Let's put it on the low here. Let's get it up to the exact high up there. Let's move this right where it belongs and make it pretty. All right, so now it's basically seated where it's supposed to fit. When we go and extend that channel, we go, oh my goodness, tell me analysis doesn't seem to just work itself out somehow. Look at the intersection right here. Look at where, we're just, where we just got to on Friday and then dumped. That's very, very interesting, traders. I think it's time for us to now get back off the slightly bullish gold bandwagon that we mentioned a few days back in our videos, Omni turned bullish. Well, right about here, I think Omni's going to start to turn bearish. Now, I haven't ran the Omni because it's not Friday evening, but I have a feeling Omni's going to be bearish, and I think that this will fall right into play. This is not Omni, but we'll see. This will probably help us with our... It'll probably give us a red Omni arrow, and if it does... This can be very nice reasoning behind it. So I wanted to show you that, traders, because that really caught my attention. I thought that was pretty hot stuff. Do you guys like that? I think that's pretty cool. That's analysis lining up. So that's what it looks like when you look at the daily goal. Let's go to the weekly. First of all, when we look at the weekly, look at this red trend line. Mega huge 2009 low crash all the way till today. And then you have this trend line here that's held support all the way through. We have broken through it clearly with a bunch of little bare flags all the way down. We broke through this ye yellow parallel channel right here clearly and continued lower. And once again, extend this out and look what happens. This stuff is like magic sometimes. You come back up and boom, you're starting to run into that channel, which should now act as resistance. Then if we look back, we have a little shelf that was building back here somewhere. Right about here, you figure that this is some kind of a shelf, by which I mean the market seemed to have all of a sudden found some legs here more than once, but not moving up or down, just moving sideways. So I call this a little bit of a shelf. And you're running into a little trouble near the shelf. The only thing that doesn't make you want to be gangbusters bearish is this 200 bar moving average. It's a very interesting average, especially when it comes to gold. A lot of fund managers look at it. And as you can see, lots of people get happy when the gold weekly bar hits the 200 moving average or gets near it. I don't know that that's the case, but we did hit it. So cautious, but I don't know from what I've seen on the dailies. We're day traders. I like what I showed you on this daily chart. So let's keep it in mind and 
No matter what happens, do not forget the April death knell still looms overhead for months end. Traders, thank you so much for coming to today's class. I hope this class helps to keep you in tune with today's analysis with where the markets are now and where the markets are likely going. Traders, this is my 1014th installment. I will continue bringing you these videos. I hope this keeps you in tune. And the 415 close today, we will have a contest at the 415 OST close. We will give out a t-shirt, so we will do the t-shirt contest. 415, don't forget, all right, traders? We will do our t-shirt contest. I don't know what that is right there. All right, there you go. So come on down, and it will be on the close of the S&P. Once again, traders, thank you so much. And always remember, stops are in. Emotions are out. Thank you so much for attending. I hope this video helps. Futures trading is risky and can cause substantial financial loss. We do not claim or guarantee that you will profit from the information provided.